What to do if bailiffs clamp your car? We look at the legislation that says when bailiffs can and cannot clamp your car to recover an unpaid debt. Bailiffs recovering an unpaid debt cannot clamp your car, if the car on someone else's private land, or driveway. Is it on hire purchase, personal contract purchase, or leased? If you use your car for your business or university, and its value is under £1,350 you are not given a notice of enforcement your car is owned by someone else, or your company the bailiff collecting somebody else's debt and, there is a disabled blue badge displayed inside the car. We now look at each of these exclusions in detail and provide you with the regulations. Bailiffs may only take control of the debtor's goods, where the debtor lives, or carries on a trade or business or, on any highway anywhere in England and Wales. If the bailiff takes control of your car that is on private land not connected to the debtor, then the debtor can sue for damages, or apply for an injunction. If the car is owned by the debtor, he may bring legal proceedings, including an application for an injunction, under paragraph 66 Schedule 12, Tribunals Courts and Enforcement Act 2007. Otherwise, the owner of the car may bring proceedings under Section 3 of the Torts Interference with Goods Act 1977 and apply for damages and costs. If the car has been clamped or towed away, the owner of the car may apply for an injunction under Section 4 of the 1977 Act, to recover the car and ask for damages together with costs. All actions are brought against the creditor, whom the bailiff is acting for. You cannot litigate a bailiff company, because they are not an enforcement agent. The law says an enforcement agent is a person, and bailiffs cannot trade as a limited company. The creditor is usually a local council, or government agency, who has instructed the bailiff to recover a debt. If the bailiff is recovering a debt in the High Court, the action and claim is brought in the High Court. Otherwise the application and claim, is brought in the county court. The law that says bailiffs may only take control of the debtor's goods on a highway is paragraph 9, b, of Schedule 12 of the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007. Paragraph 14 subparagraph 6, of Schedule 12 of the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007 says bailiffs may only take control of the debtor's goods on land where the debtor usually lives or carries on a trade or business. And finally, paragraph 11, 1, 1 of Schedule 12 of the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007 says these must be within England and Wales. Bailiffs cannot take control of goods in Scotland or Northern Ireland. The bailiff may only take control of goods only if they belong to the debtor. If the car, or vehicle, is on hire purchase, then the bailiff may not take control of it. The same is true if the car is leased, or on personal contract purchase. The hirer or lessor has no proprietary right in the vehicle until the exercise of an option to purchase, otherwise, the property in the hired goods remains with the lender. The driver never owns leased goods. Cars on hire purchase belong to the lender until the hirer makes the final payment. Bailiff companies try to claim that a debtor has a beneficial interest in hired goods, and will clamp them without removing it. This legal argument was defeated in court on 7 April 2017 in the Central London County Court. The judge listened to the solicitor's argument that a hirer has a cumulative beneficial interest in a hire purchase car, but the judge dismissed the defense and stated. The hirer has an immediate right of interest in the hire purchase goods, and ordered the vehicle to be returned to the debtor. The solicitor for the defendant bailiff should have known, as a qualified legal professional that, TT has been well established law, for more than a century, that in hire purchase agreements, the interest of the hirer in the property is limited to the right of possession pursuant to the terms and conditions of the agreement. The hirer gains no proprietary right in the property, until the exercise of an option to purchase, property and the goods remain solely with the owner. In 2007 the law was strengthened, and paragraph 10 of Schedule 12 of the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007 clearly states, the bailiff may only take control of goods if they belong to the debtor. If your hire purchase or leased car has been clamped by a bailiff, you are entitled to apply to the court for an injunction together with your costs and damages under Section 66 of Schedule 12 of the Tribunals, Courts and Enforcement Act 2007. If is always best to bring the action against the creditor, whom the bailiff is acting for. This usually the council or government department that instructed the bailiff. Otherwise litigating a bailiff company or a bailiff, results in protracted correspondence, because solicitors for bailiff companies will mess you about. 
Bringing the proceedings against the creditor is much easier, and the solicitor representing you can negotiate an out-of-court settlement for you, because the bailiff company will have lodged a public liability policy with the council to protect taxpayers from enforcement impropriety. The council will settle and pay you your claim and your solicitor's costs, and the bailiff's insurer picks up the bill. If you use your vehicle for work, trade, education, or profession, and its value is under £1,350, then it is exempt goods. If the bailiff has clamped your exempt vehicle, then you must make, what is called a claim to exempt goods, under Civil Procedure Rule 85.8. The law is Regulation 4 of the Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013, and it states, and I quote, Items are equipment, for example, tools, books, telephones, computer equipment and vehicles, which are necessary for use personally by the debtor in the debtor's employment, business, trade, profession, study or education, except that in any case the aggregate value of the items or equipment to which this exemption is applied shall not exceed £1,350. The claim is made in two stages. A notice given to the bailiff and to the creditor giving them an opportunity to return your vehicle without going to court. If the bailiff or the creditor does not accept your claim, and you wish to maintain your claim, then you apply to the court for a claim to exempt goods. You can apply for the return of your vehicle, or goods, your damages together with your costs. Your solicitor will prepare the claim and application for you, and they will recover their costs from the creditor whom the bailiff was acting for. You did not get a notice of enforcement. The document shown on the left is what a notice of enforcement should look like, and what information it must contain. It must be given at least seven clear days, excluding Sundays and public holidays, before the bailiff may take control of goods. The document in the middle is a bailiff's fishing document. It is designed to be put through letterboxes at addresses the bailiff thinks the debtor is living at, to invoke contact with the bailiff, and thereby validating the debtor's current address. This is a form of tracing, and it is illegal for bailiffs to take an enforcement step knowing the debtor has changed address and a notice of enforcement has not been given there. The law is paragraph 7 of Schedule 12, of the Tribunal's Courts and Enforcement Act 2007, which says, and I quote, an enforcement agent may not take control of goods unless the debtor has been given notice. Regulation 9 of the Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013 says, and I quote, the notice of enforcement must be given to the debtor not less than seven clear days before the enforcement agent takes control of the debtor's goods. Regulation 9 of the Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013 says, and I quote, the enforcement agent may not take control of goods of the debtor after the expiry of a period of 12 months beginning with the date of notice of enforcement. If the bailiff clamps or removes your car outside these times, or has not given a notice of enforcement, or the notice while given to a previous address, then you may apply to the court to recover your car, together with a claim for damages and your costs. If you want to find out whether a traffic contravention debt warrant has your current address on it, then you can contact the Traffic Enforcement Centre on 0300 123 1059. Then the call is answered by a call centre agent, give the penalty charge notice number first. Then the call centre agent will ask you to confirm your postcode. If you give the postcode of your previous address, and it is accepted, then you have sufficient evidence the warrant of control does not have your current address, and you can apply to stop the enforcement. This is called making an out-of-time statutory declaration, or a witness statement. There are several other reasons why the bailiff has clamped your car without giving you a statutory notice of enforcement. You have moved, changed address after the date of contravention, or you forgot to update the DVLA with your new address. You just bought the car, and the traffic contravention, the bailiff is enforcing was by the previous keeper, and the bailiff found your car on a highway and opportunistically clamped it hoping to pressure you into paying someone else's traffic contravention debt. If you moved, and the bailiff clamped your car at your new address, then that is illegal. When a bailiff finds the debtor has a new address, the law says he must inform the council or creditor, so that they can apply for a new warrant of control with the debtor's new address before enforcement can start. The law is Civil Procedure Rule 75.7. If your car is clamped, and you are not given a notice of enforcement at least seven days before, and, the address on the warrant of control is not your current address, you may bring proceedings by making an application under Civil Procedure Rule 84.13. Liability for this breach resides with the council or authority, and you may recover damages together with your costs. The council or creditor can reimburse itself from the bailiff's public liability insurance cover. 
If bailiffs clamp or remove a car that is owned by someone else, then the owner makes a third-party claim to controlled goods. This is made in two stages, the first information stage, followed by an application to court. The rules for making a third-party claim is Civil Procedure Rule 85.4. If the debt originates in the High Court, the rules for making a third-party claim to executed goods, is Civil Procedure Rule 85.6. When making a third-party claim, it is best to include evidence supporting your claim. These include, the bill of sale, or invoice for the car showing the date you bought it. The flow of money from the buyer to the seller, such as a bank statement. If the car was bought for cash, then an explanation about the origin of the cash, or its source. Showing a document for insurance and getting car tax helps strengthen your claim. These will show the dates you paid for them. If you have the vehicle service history documents, then that is compelling evidence that you own the car, because nobody else would have access to a vehicle service history file. If you have the V5 Keeper document, then include this, because the front page shows the date you got the vehicle. Bailiffs may only take control of goods if they belong to the debtor. If the warrant of control does not have your name, or your correct address, then that is evidence of an enforcement impropriety, and you can recover damages. Always check if the bailiff's documents, in particular, the warrant of control has your name, and your correct address. Bailiffs get the warrant of control from the council, who applies for it using the address that is recorded by the DVLA as the registered keeper. If bailiffs take an enforcement step knowing the warrant address for the debtor is wrong, then he attracts a liability for damages. Many bailiffs take the risk anyway, and hope the debtor is less informed of the law, and make surprise early morning clamping visits. Bailiffs cannot clamp or remove any vehicle displaying a disabled person's badge. The law says, any vehicle displaying a disabled badge is exempt from enforcement. The law is Regulation 41D of the Taking Control of Goods Regulations 2013. A vehicle on which a valid disabled person's badge is displayed because it is used for, or in relation to which there are reasonable grounds for believing that it is used for, the carriage of a disabled person. If this video has still not helped you find a way to get your clamped or towed car back, then stop the bailiffs.uk has an interactive checklist you can run, and see if there are any other enforcement improprieties that apply, and how you can recover damages. We also offer a telephone consultation where we can examine your case and give you the legal position and how you can apply for redress, or how to recover your vehicle. This is a last resort option. We call it the nuclear option. And it should be applies if you cannot identify the bailiff what clamped your car. All bailiffs that clamp a car for an unpaid debt, bust by law, fix a document to the vehicle, called a warning of immobilization. The law is Regulation 16 sub paragraph 3, and it says. Where the goods are secured by fitting an immobilization device, the enforcement agent must, at the time of immobilizing the goods, provide a written warning to the debtor, signed by the enforcement agent, to be affixed in a prominent position on the immobilized goods, a written warning if immobilization. If you do not have a warning of immobilization, then it's time to get out the power tools. If you must remove the wheel clamp, then the law is the Criminal Damage Act 1971 and it says a person who without lawful excuse destroys or damages any property belonging to another intending to destroy or damage any such property or being reckless as to whether any such property would be destroyed or damaged shall be guilty of an offence. You may have a defence. It is called, lawful excuse. And it says, that the property, right or interest was in immediate need of protection, and that the means of protection adopted or proposed to be adopted were or would be reasonable having regard to all the circumstances. If a police officer start getting funny with you, the admit to nothing, contact us, and we can arrange for a solicitor to represent you, and if you are cleared, the solicitor's fee is paid out of central funds. I hope this video has been useful, I plan to upload new videos about dealing with bailiffs each week, so please subscribe to be notified of my new uploads. Until the next one, if in doubt, keep them out.